So please welcome Frank Nazikian, the co-founder and CEO of WowToon from Hong Kong. Hi. Oops, sorry, did I get that one wrong? Sorry, my bad. Got ahead of myself. You're not, not just good, You're not a good announcer. <laughs> you're not a good announcer. <sighs> All right. Pardon me. Let's do that again. Let's do number five. What's welcome? We were supposed to be at number six at this point. That's okay, my problem. Hey. Oh. See you. Okay. Number five. Please welcome Dulik Ranatunga, the, co the founder and CEO of Orotech from Ontario, Canada. I'm, the, I'm like the bad person. All right, guys, I'm not Frank's wrong guy. I'm the leak. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we all know a relative or a friend who has been diagnosed with cancer. As a matter of fact, someone diagnosed with late stage cancer has a less than 20% chance of surviving. And the current way to treat cancer is to make it personalized. See, cancer is a very personal disease. It's your own cells mutating and generic drugs just by themselves aren't going to cut it. So, how do hospitals treat uh, cancer right now? Well, it's uh, done using something called target-based drug discovery. So, taking a small tumor sample from a patient and testing which uh, genes are positive or negative, active or inactive in that cancer. Basically figuring out a profile of the tumor and then matching it with a drug. So, the doctor uses their intuition, past experience, and clinical data to make a leap from this drug is supposed to work on this type of cancer. This patient has this type of cancer. Let's treat him with this. This is not an exact science. This is intuition. What Orotech does is something called phenotypic drug testing. So we actually take small tumor samples and test which drugs will kill the tumor and quantify that, then determine the dosage that will be best used for the patient so that instead of using intuition, we can turn personalized cancer treatment into an exact science using data, and anal analysis. So our process starts by taking the patient uh, tumor sample from a biopsy. Our technology lies in a product called the hydrogel, a chemical that allows us to grow hundreds of small tumor samples that, and, mimic, uh, and mimic the environment found inside of a tumor. So it basically mimic the human con uh, body, the conditions found in the tumor. Uh, our first product is uh, mimicking late stage breast and colon cancer. From there, we can test different drug combinations, see which one works the best, and which, one, uh, which tumors are resistant to which drugs, or if uh, drug resistance can develop later on. That way, we can uh, determine which of the combinations is the best over the treatment period, and administer that to the patient so that they have the highest chance of surviving. So, since starting this company, we've validated our first product on breast cancer, and we have academic and pharmaceutical pilot testers and two patents pending. Uh, we've tested over 1,000 breast cancer tumors so far. For HER2 positive breast cancer, it's the most common type of breast cancer. And uh, we will be starting preclinical trials next year uh, in Korea in January, or uh, between January to March, and later uh, in North America as well. We've done this uh, with a team that has a lot of PhD professor, professor experience, of course. Uh, we have experience developing drugs and commercializing them through clinical trials, uh, experience doing academic research in uh, top institutes like Harvard, MIT, and the University of Waterloo, where we're based. And we also have uh, industry experience working in pharmaceutical startups and big companies like Fluidime and Sigma Aldrich, chemical and biotech companies. So basically, I've said uh, this before, but we are looking to start testing on mice and then humans soon, and uh, we will need this funding for all the investors who are interested in giving us money right after this pitch. Please come talk to me. At Orotech, we are turning uh, cancer treatment into an exact science so that the treatment you get is the treatment you need. Thank you very much, Dalik. Let's come on over. So this is the second personalized medicine startup we've heard from yes. tonight, so uh, definitely maybe we're on to it's the next topic. big thing. <laughs> I think Nick is trying to tell me something. Um, I think he says he wants to go first. Okay, <laughs> Nick, what did you think? Uh -huh. um, are there other approaches that are similar to this, or are yes. you unique? So there's something called avatar mice. So we do it inside of a gel, a chemical product. Uh, this can also be done inside of mice. The difference is the mice cost 10 times as much, and it takes six months to do it. So for a late stage cancer patient, that's not really an option to wait six months. We do it in one week for a tenth of the cost. So when you have late stage cancer, you have to go to us, basically. That's it, that, that's yeah. the delta. I mean, right. and there's, there's nothing else so, that's as efficient as yours. Yeah, so uh, the other companies that are in this space uh, 
have specialized in different cancers. Their technology is designed to mimic certain cancers. Like I've said before, our one mimics late-stage breast and colon cancer. That's our expertise. That's what our company is best at. Nobody else focuses Not on for that. breast and... Uh, there's for brain cancer, sure, but not for breast and colon. And the other ones that do the targeted... So yours... Um, some of the other ones actually don't just figure out the dosage and the type of drug. They actually create specialized, personalized cocktail of a drug. D how does that compare to what you're doing? Right. So with actually making... Uh, uh, so when we do this combination testing, it is on cocktails of drugs or individual uh, drugs. So we can test either of those. And if you're talking about making a new drug per person, that companies have tried that and they've failed because it's completely commercially unfeasible to make a new drug for each person. Uh, which is why you have to take existing drugs or cocktails of drugs and test out which one will work better on a patient. Guys have other questions? Kate, oh. any questions before I, we go to scores? I'll be here all night, which you don't want. <laughs> um, wow, that, it's amazing. Uh, but you're still in, obviously in the process of you, you, you need funding to get into testing on mice and then you would like to go into testing um, on... Humans. Real people, yes. right? Yes. Um, so we've tested on human uh, tumor samples, just not put the drugs into people yet. For and, the hu and, the, and the tumor samples, and your, your success rate with the tumor samples has been able to... Yeah, so we can test the drugs, but we, can, uh, we, can, we have to do a clinical trial to see if we can increase the survival rate. So we'll take, let's say, late-stage breast cancer, 20% survival rate, and our goal is to get 30%, 40% survival rate, so double you know, that survival rate of patients. Wow. What's your timeline on that? So uh, two years for all the mice testing and three more years to four years for the clinical trials. Uh, and of course, with a healthcare company, during the clinical trials process, you can be acquired by a pharma company during the process. That's usually how it works. This is LA, man. You could get people to try these drugs a lot sooner than that. <laughs> That's a good point. I'm just saying. I think it's time for some scores. <laughs> Teresa. So first, I think what you're doing is great. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give it an eight and a half because I feel like it's very promising, but it's still quite a long timeline. Uh, and uh, but what you're doing is amazing for some people who are important to I'm sure many of us. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. I'm going to give it a seven because it's um, it's great uh, work that you're doing, just early stage, and it's way over my head. <laughs> okay. uh, I'll give it an eight. All right. Thank you very much.